Hi everyone, Paul here, and if you trade or invest in Bitcoin, then you don't want to miss today's video. Just a few hours ago, we had the daily bar close in Bitcoin, and there was major movement overnight. This is really significant news for the bulls, and a real hammer blow for the bears. So what happened overnight that was so significant? What do we need to see next which will confirm that move, and how do we figure out where Bitcoin will go from here? I'll be covering all of that and more in today's video, so make sure you stay right till the end. Let's jump in. Starting with our daily chart, you can see the initial move past the 42 mark on the 7th of January. And we pretty much stayed around that uh, support for the last couple of days. Until last night, you can see we've broken through that 42,000 mark and pushed nearly all the way down back to this previous low back here on the 21st of September at uh, about 39.5. Now, we didn't actually breach that limit. We um, stopped just before it, before reversing back. Now, going through that, a lot of people have said that would have been a good, that would have even been a bigger clean out. Now, I think it would have been okay, but certainly I think that stopping and reversing just before that mark is, uh, is much better for the bullish case. So I think that's a really good thing. And if we look at the, uh, the one hour mark, you can see the, uh, the big capitulation that we had here. So, you know, we're up here at about uh, 42.7. We had a little bit of a sell-off, um, dwelled around resistance or support here at 42 before, you know, just got sold down. You can see we sold down all the way down quite close to this 39.5, 39.6 mark before it was really aggressively bought back up. And you can see it's just pushed back up into support. So if we go back to the daily chart, you can see the next day bar has opened and uh, we're already up for the day. You know, we're up a bit over 1% and we're just sort of hovering just slightly above that 42 mark. So that's a really significant move. Um, that's pretty much what I've been talking about in my last few videos, exactly what we wanted to see. And so, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Thanks to my uh, youngest Archie for that surprise cameo. It was all his idea, I promise. So what else are we seeing which confirms this view and what else do we need to see to confirm that the setup's underway? So let's jump in and look at some futures data. Now the first significant sign is that the uh, perpetual futures funding rate, and that's what this chart shows here, has uh, flipped from positive to negative. Now that happens when the majority of traders have flipped from uh, owning long positions to short positions. Now in futures you've always got the same number of open positions, uh, long and short, but in this instance, we've got more traders going short, and to represent that imbalance, you have the futures funding rate. So in this case, it's, it's flipped to negative, so we know that there's more traders going short. Now, I think at an inflection point like this in the market that it's crazy that you'd want to take on a leveraged short position, especially when it wasn't that long ago in November that we were at all-time highs, which you know would have been a much safer position to, to go at uh, leveraged short. But anyway, that's why uh, retail leverage traders exist is because they'll often take these counterintuitive positions like this. And, you know, it's at times when they take a position like this that you know, um, you know, with quite a lot of certainty that the market is going to reverse because these guys are generally wrong. Uh, and so what will happen is that we'll see the market start to move up and these people in these leverage positions will get squeezed and that will force them to buy back and we'll see a you know, rapid um, you know, movement in price and they call that a, a short covering rally. Um, and so that's what I'd expect that we're going to see over the next couple of days. And so why do I think it'll be you know, a savage rally at this point? So we know that leverage traders in the market, specifically retail leverage traders in the market have gone short. Um, and if we look here, this is the estimated leverage ratio. So this is the open positions versus the uh, number of coins on exchanges. And we can see that this estimated ratio, it's an estimate, not necessarily 100% accurate, but it gives us a good sense of what leverage is in the marketplace. And you can see it's at all time highs. So that says to me that there's too much leverage in the marketplace at the moment. We can see that we've still got extremely high levels of open interest in the market. So these charts show Bitcoin's price versus the open interest. You can see the big uh, sell-off that we had here on the 4th of December and this you know, really you know, elevator drop uh, in open interest. Now we just haven't seen that. Uh, I mentioned in previous videos after that big drop, 
um, you know, we had a big deleveraging, but then open interest just came straight back, which is, which is not what you'd expect after a big leverage flush. Now, the market's fallen back again. We know that we had mostly leveraged longs. We know that traders have shifted short, um, but the open interest is still quite high. And so what I'd also expect to see is as the price starts to uh, gain traction and we start to move upwards, we'll see that uh, leverage um, start to get cleaned out. We'll see those uh, retail leverage long positions get squeezed. So we'll see open interest start to drop. And finally, in terms of liquidations, we haven't really seen uh, those liquidations start yet. So just as before, you know, when we had this 4th of December clean out, prior to that, we had, you know, leverage positions starting to get squeezed. Now, we haven't really seen that um, big flush yet, but we have started to see this slow increase right before it. So what I'm expecting to see and what we'll want to see to confirm that this is all starting to unravel for these uh, leverage traders is a big spike like this in the next couple of days which will be associated with a, uh, a spike higher in price. So how do we know it's going to be a savage rally? We can see that through open interest and the estimated leverage ratio. We know that there hasn't been any real significant liquidations yet and so that's all to come. We know that retail traders, you know, leverage retail traders have flipped from long to short and they've done it at a really key inflection point. We've had that uh, push downwards to 39.5 uh, and then a big rally back upwards to 42,000. So we're really at a, a critical point for those short positions and any move upwards is going to create that big, you know, uh, cascade event, but a cascade event up. So that thrust upwards. So the culmination of those forces is what's going to propel a really significant rally, I think, in the next couple of days. So if you're enjoying this video, uh, even the baby bit, uh, it'd be great if you could like it so other people can find it as well. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, uh, subscribe and uh, feel free to leave a comment. So this is what we want to see over the next few days to know that the rally is going to be real and sustaining. We want to see a big deleveraging which will be uh, depicted by uh, a drop in the estimated leverage ratio, a drop in open interest, and then a significant spike in liquidations. Now, all these things will happen hand in hand with a significant spike higher. So this leaves the question of where do we think Bitcoin will go from here? Well, it's hard to predict too far out in advance, but I think a really good place to look for clues is the options market. Markets which have options over the top of them have this uncanny ability to find the, the most commonly traded price or the, the strike price with the, the most open interest added at expiration. So for those of you that are new to options, uh, options are a contract between buyers and sellers to exchange a specific asset at a particular price at a specific point in time. Now that price is referred to as the strike price and that time is generally referred to as expiration or expiry. A call option is the right for the holder of that option to buy the asset at that specific price, the strike price, at that specific point in time, expiration. And for the holder of a put, so the buyer of a put, they have the right to sell that particular asset at the strike price at that particular point in time. So where's the most activity for January options? And what clues does that give us in terms of where we think the price of Bitcoin might be by the end of the month? So looking here at the Bitcoin options by, um, by strike price, this is looking at all of January, you can see here by these green and red shaded areas where the most in open interest is. So starting up here at 70,000, you can see there's quite a lot of uh, call op op option open interest. And then we go down to 60,000 and you've got quite a lot of both call and put open interest. Um, there's still more down here at 55, but then there's more call and put option open interest again at 50,000. Now there's um, more, trade, more trading volume at some of these lower levels like 44 and so on. But the thing that's interesting to me is that you've got these key levels again, uh, like we did last month, where you have a lot of activity. So as you'd expect, you'll see more puts as you go lower and more calls as you go higher up the strike ladder. Um, but I think this gives us a little bit of clue, a little bit of a clue in terms of what the market's thinking. You've got people buying puts down here as protection against the fall, again at that key 42,000 level. Uh, and then you've got increasing uh, open interest and volume 
uh, at these higher levels. So interestingly, you know, not too much here at 45, but you see this big spikes here now, 48,000, 50,000, uh, again at 55, some at 60, and then quite a lot at 70, but that's mostly put. So for me, the interesting ones, I think are 60,000, and then we've got 50,000. So those are two key points that option players are focusing on. And I think that gives us a little bit of clue. Obviously, 50,000 or 60,000 would be great, but uh, what will be interesting is to see where we land. Now, I'm not saying that options traders are smarter than futures traders. Uh, you know, anyone playing with leverage really has to know what they're doing. But as I said before, um, having traded options for a long time, it's very common to see uh, the price of the underlying asset close very close to the um, strike price with the most activity in it. So at the moment, you know, that's starting to look like 50,000. So that'll be really interesting to see if we start to move towards that from this point here. So to wrap up, looking at the weekly chart, we can see that Bitcoin's managed to hold that really key support level of uh, 39.5. We didn't quite touch it. And we've bounced right back to this 42,000 level. So the next couple of days are gonna be really critical. I'm pretty confident from uh, what we've seen in terms of price action and some of these uh, changes in the futures market that this is what um, we're going to see over the next few days. So, you know, we're hopefully going to see a big move upwards. It may take a day or two to shake out. And obviously what we need to see is an escalation of price, which creates that cascade of leverage in for terms of a short squeeze, forcing these leverage traders to get out of the market and buy back their positions. What we're hoping is that this is now the low. And from this point, we'll shoot back up to higher highs. So uh, everything's looking pretty good for that kind of move. And we'll just have to wait to see what happens over the next couple of days. I hope that was helpful. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.